and your best friends. And I talked about water. These are simple things. I rated Diane's uh, plastic bag. These are two plastic bag, two one gallon plastic bags. Lots of things you can do with this. If nothing else, they'll hold water. Okay? And also, <coughs> I don't think you can boil water in this. The doctor sitting here can help offer whether this opinion is good. I've been told that if you can bring water up to about 140, 150 degrees and hold it there for a while, it pasteurizes. I think you have to boil water for 15 minutes. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard people bring it, say boil it for 5 minutes to 15 or say bring but it up. That's assuming you have something to boil. Yeah, the best but if you don't have to boil if anything to boil it in, I, I have read and researched that if you can bring it up and hold it at about 150 degrees for about one opinion was 20 minutes, cowboy hats, Another opinion was 45 minutes. You can sit this near the fire, let it get warm, let it get heated. But why bother? I mean, I would just curious. Why, why yeah, why bother? You know, why bother? Okay. But this is if you've, you know, if this is broken or thing. I'm trying to, you know, again, give yourself multiple outs. Okay. Plus, probably the worst thing you'll get is giardia, but that's going to be days. Yeah, well, that's, that's and you'll be alive with giardia with yeah. diarrhea, so just... You're reading my notes on this. Yes, bring all these ways to purify and water. And it eventually drink clarifies water anyway. itself anyway. So. Because, you know, it's better to be found tomorrow and get a nice case of the screaming Montezuma's revenge three days later than to die of dehydration before they find it. Okay? Remember, survival is a pass-fail course. Uh, a couple little things here. Mm -hmm. uh, space blankets. These things reflect heat very well. You could be in a, in a huge snowstorm, dig out a little snow cave, line the bottom with some evergreen boughs. You finally usually find those or something, you know, to, so you're up off the snow. Dig out your snow cave, put this kind of around, you know. The, the, the sides or top just somehow to reflect some heat. You can probably live off of that as far as heat overnight. The snow will insulate you. This will reflect the heat back in that. You're not going to have this, you know, the, the, the you know, bare skin rub kind of warm, cozy feeling, but you'll be alive. And that actually works. When I was a kid, I used to make snow forts and put a candle in the side. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of heat from that one candle. It's amazing. More ways to build fire. If, if I am ever in the woods and I'm rubbing two sticks together, I'm either on the TV show Survivor <laughs> or I failed step P, okay? I failed it badly because I should have had four or five. Now, this one is going to probably give you a chuckle. A little pack of tissue paper. What do you need that for? Instead of using poison ivy, absolutely. Okay? Yeah. It's lightweight, it weighs nothing, and if you have to go potty, <laughs> this, this part is a comfort item, and the other part is, it's also fire tender. Okay, this is in a, this is in a plastic bag, this is gonna be dry. Fire. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> thing, tie it up, make a little little lean to to get me out of the out of the rain. Mm -hmm. If it's wet, I can cut a hole in it, cut armholes. I got a I've got a raincoat. If it's cold and I didn't bring my coat, I can cut a head hole and two armholes, fill it full of dead leaves, and I've got a puffy uh, vest. Okay, we're talking about stacking the deck as far as you can in your favor. Now. As much as I, you know, people usually with me, a public address system, they, they stick a sock in my mouth. And, you know, because I, I project very well. But if you're lost, you can scream for a little while, and that's not going to carry that far. You will also get very tired. Mm -hmm. Take a whistle. Every few, 
every few minutes. You know, you've already told your friend, your, your buddy, come start looking for my rear end. Okay? This will help him find, you know, help zero, because the, the, the Bigfoot's not going to be sitting out in the woods blowing your, well, if he's blowing your whistle, you're kind of <laughs> in kind of bad shape. But you see what I'm saying? That takes nothing. You give a few toots on that, and, you're, and you'll be, well, now, these two are for only needed. I wear contact lenses. And if I have a problem with my contact lenses, I have a problem seeing, okay? The military guys in here will appreciate my source of supply, okay? Birth control glasses, yes. But that may... <laughs> yes, if you're wearing these glasses, this is all the birth control you will need. Okay? You're never going to get past first base if you're wearing these. The women's version is called rape control glasses. I'm not going to go into why that is, okay? But, you know, this is not something you might think about in normal things. But if you wear contact lenses, you go out. I wear contact lenses out of the woods all the time, okay? I have a spare pair in my car just in case I have, you know, because if I don't, if I can't see, I'm kind of screwed. So, and one last thing, some of us who have, you know, some of us who have topped the age of 50, and I put this in just as a, an example, have things we have to take every day to maintain our health. Put two or three days worth in here, okay? If you got to ask, you know, don't worry about your daily supplements you know, so that you're, you know, you're B6 or B12 or whatever. But if you take heart medicine or you take something for diabetes or something like that, something that you might need, put it in the bag. Remember, all of this stuff, everything I just showed you here, total weight less than a pound and a half. It can go in a bag somewhere, okay? Again, the difference being, are they going to find a body? Or they're going to find you. And all of this stuff, you know, the best thing is to make sure you avoid it. But sometimes you can't. Trucks break down. Okay? Some other things that, you know, and, and creativity, you know, think about this. One of the things, I didn't put it in here because i got enough ways to make fire already, but you can get, you can take steel wool and a 9-volt battery and, and get a, get a, a source of, of ignition. If you've got a little bit of tender, okay? You just arc it. Yeah, yeah, yeah just, hold, just arc put, it. The, put the steel wool on there right above your tender. Yeah. You, the, 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 you get a high enough resistance in the steel wool. You know, those are just neat little things.